Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late here. I was trying to figure out different settings on here and everything, but happy Monday to you. I seen a great post on Facebook from our friend Heather this morning um, that talks about uh, how Mondays can be tough, but you have to choose to have beautiful noise in the morning when you get up to face a new week and know that God is with you. Amen and praise the Lord, right? Good morning, Mary. Um, so yes, today is Monday. I have to uh, turn my phone down here so I won't get interrupted. And uh, let's start off with our morning affir <laughs> affirmations. <clears throat> I am important. Today is going to be a great day. The world needs me. Today, I choose happiness. I believe in myself. Today is a fresh start. Today, I will do my best. And today and every day, God loves me and I am his child. Praise the Lord and amen to that, right? <clears throat> um, so for May 3rd, <clears throat> from William Carey, it looks like, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And tomorrow, May 4th, from Psalm 103, verses, I think it's 4 and 5. Um, praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you will love and compassion, or you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Well, we all have to appreciate that, don't we? I like that last part there. Your youth is renewed. We're only as old as we feel, right? Well, maybe maybe I shouldn't say it that way sometimes, right? But so <clears throat> we'll start out with our acts of kindness here. One listener shared with me that um, a friend left some cookies and a sweet note um, on her doorstep. Nice surprise. I love that. Good morning, Dean. I'm glad you're here. He sends me GIFs all the time that says, I'm here, or thank you, or yes, or whatever. Um, and he says, I'm here today, and I'm glad you're here, Dean. Um, and um, another, well, actually, my sister-in-law shared with me that, and I love this one, a little girl waved and smiled right at me at the grocery store yesterday. She was about seven years old, and it made me so happy. Just the little things, my friends. Just the little things. Okay, let's see. Seriously, here. There we go. We got to get rid of this here. There we go. Good morning, Patty. I love your pictures on the lake. I'm so jealous. Um, so continuing with acts of kindness. <clears throat> Another person shared that they brought some homemade stew and buns to their neighbor. How nice is that? Um, and then um, a, uh, a family that raises horses in a different country uh, were having trouble um, getting hay. Um, they've had some financial difficulties. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, somebody donated money to them to purchase enough hay for all their horses. Praise the Lord. Um, I just have to put out, it's it's a kind of an act of kindness, but not really. But I have to put a shout out to Makara. Um, she was, she's our, our, our racer gal that races race car out in Devil's Lake. Um, she was chosen as Mayville State University Student of the Year. Congratulations, Makara. Um, if any of you guys know Makara, she is just an amazing young lady in so many ways. And I am so happy and so, so proud of her. Um, 
So let's see. Uh, let me just make, oh, another act of kindness here for two weeks in a row now because I forgot to mention it. Uh, Richard took his friend Carol to Fairdale to play at church after already playing at the Adams Church. And so Carol and Richard attended two services last Sunday and this Sunday. And um, uh, Richard was sharing with me that he walked in last week. Pastor Jody said, didn't you get enough of me? You have to come back for a second service. Um, and knowing Richard, no. He uh, he can never get enough of the word. And God bless you, Carol, for helping our churches out with your beautiful music. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, okay, <clears throat> so we have a, a, a bunch of prayers here. Forgive me if I missed some. There was some brought up this weekend. Um, and um, if I don't have a a pen to write them down and get them home with me. I, I forget. But first of all, it was shared with me that we need prayers for Don Ropel. Um, Don was D-A-W-N, by the way. There's the, They're married, and it's Don and Don, D-A-W-N and D-O-N. But prayers for Don Ropel as she is um, beginning her cancer treatment. And so everybody out here, send prayers that way. And then um, we have John Cly and uh, Joni Cly. Um, John, too, is um, going through um, cancer treatment. He's originally from the Osnabrück area. And there is a caring bridge set up for him. And his last name is spelled K-L-A-I. And then Joni um, has a tumor in her head that needs to be removed. And so both John and Joni really need some prayers sent out to them. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Um, I have an Eva, a little Eva update. A little gal Eva that we've been praying for. Look at that beautiful soul. Look at her, what a trooper. Um, so I'm gonna share this with you. She will be off of all pain meds and sedation by noon today. Uh, she is doing great, clearing her lungs and says she isn't in any pain. We hit a roadblock, though, because next steps are eating and drinking and she won't swallow with the feeding tube in. But if we take it out and she still won't, it has to go back in, which could also cause more irritation. The only other option would be for her to have another surgery to have a feeding pump attached to her stomach until she relearns how to swallow. Um, please, um, send prayers that there is no damage from intubation that's preventing her to swallow and we can get some feeds in orally tomorrow and all prayers are greatly appreciated. Of course they are. We know that. So continued prayers go out to our little friend, Eva and her family, of course, um, Prayers um, go out to my little friend and our little friend in the community, to uh, Jada Moan. She's one that's just helped me in my ministry here at church services and such a great little gal, but just going through a few struggles right now. And she could certainly use all of our prayers. Prayers go out to Ron Samuelson from the Adams area as it's been passed on to me that Ron is now on hospice dealing with Parkinson's. He's in great spirits, um, loves visits and conversation. All is good there. And so if any of you know Ron, reach out to Ron and, and give him a call or, or uh, give him a visit. Um, I learned last weekend, yesterday, that Ronnie Loris's brother, Orlin, I believe his name is, um, has been diagnosed with cancer. And so um, prayers go out to um, Orlin and the Loris family for that. Um, prayers go out for our friend Francis. Uh, we've prayed for Francis several times, but we need to keep the prayers going. Um, she's doing okay, but like I mentioned, she lost her 
her puppy Buster a couple weeks ago, and it's just really, really hard on her. And there again, if any of you could shoot her a, a card, a visit, a phone call, uh, Francis would truly, truly appreciate that. So prayers continue to go out for, for Francis. Okay, so I'm <clears throat> going to share a reading with you because um, I've gotten feedback that people like these inspirational stories that I find. So um, here we go. One day a teacher asked her students to list the names of the other students in the room on two sheets of paper, leaving a space between each name. Then she told them to think of the nicest thing that they could say about each of their classmates and write it down. It took the remainder of the class period to finish their assignment, and as the students left the room, each one handed in their papers. That Saturday, the teacher wrote down the name of each student on a separate sheet of paper and listed what everyone else had said about that individual. On Monday, she gave each student his or her list. Before long, the entire class was smiling. Really? She heard them whisper. I never knew that I meant anything to anyone. And I didn't know others liked me so much, were most of the comments. No one ever mentioned those papers in class again. She never knew if they discussed them after class or with their parents, but it didn't really matter. The exercise had accomplished its purpose. The students were happy with themselves and one another. That group of students moved on. Several years later, one of the students was killed in Vietnam, and his teacher attended the funeral of that special student. She had never seen a serviceman in a military coffin before. It looked, or he looked so handsome, so mature. The church was packed with his friends. One by one, those who loved him took a last walk by the coffin. The teacher was the last one to bless the coffin. As she stood there, one of the soldiers who acted as Paul Bear came up to her. Were you Mark's math teacher? He asked. She nodded. Yes. Then he said, Mark talked about you a lot. After the funeral, most of Mark's former classmates went together to a luncheon. Mark's mother and father were there, obviously waiting to speak to his teacher. We want to show you something, his father said, taking a wallet out of his pocket. They found this on Mark when he was killed. We thought you might recognize it. Opening the billfold, he carefully removed two worn pieces of notebook paper that had obviously been taped, folded, and refolded many times. The teacher knew without looking um, that the papers were the ones on which she had listed all the good things each of Mark's classmates had said about him. Thank you so much for doing that, Mark's mother said. As you can see, Mark treasured it. All of Mark's former classmates started to gather around. Charlie smiled rather sheepishly and said, I still have my list too. It's in the top drawer of my desk at home. Chuck's wife said, Chuck asked me to put his in our wedding album. I have mine too, Marilyn said. It's in my diary. Then Vicky, another classmate, reached into her pocketbook, took out her wallet, and showed her worn and frazzled list to the group. I carry this with me at all times, Vicky said, and without batting an eyelash, she continued, I think we all saved our lists. That's when the teacher finally sat down and cried. She cried for Mark and all of his friends who would never see him again. The density of people in society is so thick that we forget that life will end one day and we don't know when that one day will be. So please tell the people you love and care for that they are special and important before it's too late. Um, and so then it just goes on um, to, of course, um, share this on social media, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But isn't that beautiful? The tiniest acts of kindness can be so, 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 so treasured um, by other folks. Good morning, Luann and Peggy. 
you might have to rewind it if you didn't get that little reading I did. It was it was pretty inspirational. So with that, let us all pray. Dear Father, we pray you will help us today to strengthen our faith and seek only you, not the world, for answers. We pray you will guide us down the path where you are, not where we think we need to be. Please freshen our souls with peace and overwhelming joy so that we can rest in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning we are going to visit our gospel reading from John 15 verses 1 through 8. And I'll read that to you now so that you know where we're going in the message. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches, branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Amen. Amen. So um, I'm just going to share with you uh, my children's sermon just real quick. Um, my mom had sent me flowers for my birthday. And as you can imagine, they're probably, or they're, they're withering now. They're falling down no mat matter how much water that I give them. Um, because as we know, flowers that come in a vase, their stems have been clipped from uh, their roots, right? And then the beautiful plant that I received from little Miss Sophie Lindell um, was planted in some dirt and it has roots and it's big and it's beautiful and it's green because it still has its roots. Um, so do you see where I'm going with this? with the kids. Um, and so that's kind of where we are going today. Um, and so grace and mercy and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the only son of God, our only vine. Amen. So starting out with this story here in London, I found this fascinating. There is a grapevine that is reported to be the oldest living vine in the world. It is over 230 years old. And the grapevine has one root, one root that is about 12 feet around. And some of the branches are over 120 feet long. Now, despite its age, the vine still produces 500 to 700 bunches of grapes every year, weighing anywhere from 500 to 700 pounds. And although some of the branches are 120 feet away from the main root, you know, really, really far away from the main root, they still bear the same sweet, delicious fruit year after year because they are connected to the old but fruitful vine. Each branch is connected directly to the stem and draws nourishment from it and produces fruit year after year after year after year. Now, if these branches could talk, I think they might say that their relationship to the vine is the most important things in their life, important thing in their lives, right? Okay, we know branches can't talk, but branches, otherwise known as believers, us, connected to Jesus, the true vine, can talk. So, if I asked you today, 
as a believer in Jesus, what is the most important thing in your life? What do you value most in your lives? How would you answer that? What would you say? Think about that just for a second. And then keep in mind that what you value most is usually the center of our lives, right? Or that we, yeah. What we value most will usually take up the most time in our day. And what we value most will usually be the object of our spending, our wealth, our time, our talent, and our treasure. Why is that? Well, obviously, because it's worth it, right? Duh. If it's the most valuable thing in our lives, we are going to do that. But one danger the Christians today um, experience is that they value Christ, but only in certain areas of their life. They're like branches slightly severed from the vine beginning to wither. As such, their faith relationship to Jesus is privately engaging, but somehow publicly irrelevant. With the recent pandemic over the year and some months, um, I, we have really seen the power of faith blossom like a spring flower. But we also see the confusion of American culture on display. Because you see, when tragedies hit, people run back to the church, church, run back to the Bible and prayer. They get on their knees, study the word of God. And even politicians, rightly so, will call for a day of prayer. One day. So I have to share with you this story about a woman and a husband. Her husband went to prison for an armed robbery. While he was in prison, the wife bought him a Bible with a beautiful inscription in it. Her husband studied the Bible faithfully while he was incar incarcerated and wrote her beautiful spiritual and inspirational letters every day for five years. She was excited. She couldn't wait for the day of his release to begin a new life together in the name of Jesus Christ. The day came, she went and picked him up. And out he comes with his bag and belongings. Her heart was on fire. She met him with a big hug and kiss and got back into the driver's side of the car. And as he entered the passenger side, he reached in his bag, pulled out the Bible, tossed it in the back seat and said, well, I guess I don't need this anymore. Every time I hear that story, I just cringe. And this is a true story, my friend. Um, I know this couple very, very well. In a culture that at one time had the Bible as a textbook in schools, but now often ridicules committed faith and a culture that calls for prayer in crisis, but never on a good day, we see spiritual confusion and rebellion. Now, if you think about it, it's not merely a day, one day of prayer that we need. We don't only need the Bible when we are in prison. It's an entire life of prayer and God's word flowing from a solid relationship between us and Jesus Christ. It's not merely faith for the moment that we need to solve the ills of the day a week, a year. It's a real connection to the true vine that is God's answer for the world and for a lifetime. Now that a mess that, excuse me, now I'm getting all excited. Now that's a message worth preaching about. That's a message worth hearing. And most importantly, that is a message worth believing, my friends. No matter what is going on in the world, no matter what's going on in your life or my life, we remember, 
We are the branches connected to the one and only vine that is deeper and stronger and more powerful than any circumstance we ever encounter. Now, when our lives are rooted by faith in the Lord Jesus, that's what makes life worth living. That's what makes our families and relationships worth celebrating. That's what makes our neighbors, and who is our neighbors? Everyone is our neighbors. Everyone we run into is our neighbors. That is what makes our neighbors the object of our prayers and concern. When Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches, he is saying, it's about time to show where you are rooted. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man abides in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing. When we, the branches, are connected to the life-giving vine, we can't help but show to who and how we are rooted. Jesus says, God the Father is glorified when we bear fruit. When we bear fruit of the Father, my friends, others are blessed because they see Jesus in us. Have you ever run into someone and had a conversation and knew right away that Jesus was in their heart? You could see it. You could feel it. Oh, it's the best feeling I have. But in order for us to show this, we must first know and believe in who he is ourselves. And who is he? He says, he tells us, I am the vine. You're not. He is the source of life. He is the source of eternal forgiveness and salvation for all who believe. In fact, Jesus told his disciples that they are clean, blessed, and forgiven just because of his word. In John 15, verse 3, he tells each one of us, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Not of anything that we have done, but it is because of his word spoken to us. How wonderful is that? Just think again of the relationship of branches to a vine. The power comes up from the roots through the stem, right? Branches are dependent on that vine for their strength, their growth, and even for their fruit. And even pruning, from God's perspective, is God trimming excess leaves and blooms so that we might bear even more spiritual fruit in our lives for others. He is the vine. He alone. There is no other source of life and salvation, my friends. We are the branches of Jesus, the one and only true vine. Now, some say, I found this, I thought it was kind of cute. Some say that the most sensitive nerve in the human body is the one connected to the pocketbook. Think about that for a minute and hear this. Where our time, talent, and treasure are at work, our values and faith are also in action. Jesus himself taught that. He taught that where a man's treasure is, there his heart is as well. So the point of this is that there are many who think that money, wealth, power, and prestige are valuable life-giving resources. Vines worth being connected to, or should I say, vines worth being connected to? Can those vines, money, wealth, power, and prestige, can they buy God's love, mercy, and grace? Can they save us from our sins and provide us eternal life? Some of us may be able to look back on the depression or recession. Didn't those times teach us that all the wealth in the world without God's grace and mercy is not enough for the real issues of life? I want to remind you, 
in this life, there's only one thing that's important, and that is our relationship with God, the God of the universe who created and redeemed us. To be connected to him is to receive the power to live life abundantly now and forever. To be disconnected from him is to be severed from the one who created us, redeemed us, and resourced us to be his own. He adopted us as his child. Once we're disconnected, we begin to wither away like a severed branch disconnected from its vine. Just like the flowers that I received a couple of weeks ago for my birthday. Here is a fun little short story that you will get a kick off, kick up, kick. You will get a kick of, um, and some of you may even remember this. It was many years ago at the Tournament of Roses Parade. The Standard Oil Company, now known as Chevron, had a beautiful float in the parade. In the middle of the parade, the oil company's float came to a grinding halt, as well as all the rest of the parade behind it. What was the problem? The float committee would, had spent countless hours dotting their I's and crossing their T's and days making sure that everything was perfect and in place, but had simply forgotten to fill the float engine with gas. That's right, my friends, the Chevron Oil and Gas Company had forgot to fill their float with gas. They ran out of gas. The directors of the Chevron float had done everything well, except they neglected to use their company's vast resources of oil. They had neglected to do the one thing needed to finish the job for that big, important day. The parade waited while someone ran to get a gallon of gas. I think that that is uh, such a funny story, but does it kind of tell us about our life too? Are we or have we done the one thing to finish the job for that big important day? Today, my friends, is not the day to run out of gas. Today is not the day for us to be severed from the vine of Jesus. Today is the day for us, no matter where we have been or what we have done, to be reconnected with Jesus and build that relationship with him. He is the vine who empowers all of us, the branches that are connected to him. And today is a call just to repent our sins. And to believe in Christ alone. What a marvelous truth, my friends. Jesus is the vine. We are not. But we can be the branches connected to him by faith. Disciples of Christ connected to the vine. It's time. It's time to show to who and how we are rooted. Who do we belong to? Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's time. It's time to show that we are his. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hello, Dolores. Great to see you on here. Wow, I hope you are doing well. Um, I love that piece. It brings me joy. It brings me so much joy to live with the fact that we are God's branches and connected to him. So with that, let us all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple announcements for High Plains folks um, that weren't in church um, last weekend, but the directories should be done this week. Um, I have the, the, it came up while we were visiting here. I have the final draft in my email right now. And Carla Rademacher from um, Quality Print in Langdon has been such a blessing. Um, she has been so quick and um, so just so wonderful in this whole process. So God bless you, Carla. And then also super excited to share with you folks that we are going to be having Bible school at the Park River Bible Camp. Um, June 22nd through the 24th from 10 to 3. Um, please message me if you would like me to send out an invitation to anyone that you can think of. They don't have to be just in our parish. Um, so excited about this. The kids will be able to go on a nature hike, maybe do some fishing. Um, so much more opportunities out at the Park River Bible Camp than just in our church. Um, and of course, they have a chapel there um, that we can use as well. So thank you goes to Becca and all of her staff out at Park River Bible Camp. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon all of you and be gracious unto all of you. May the Lord look upon each and every one of you with his favor and give you all his amazing peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is a gift from God, my friends. That is why they call today the present. Make the most of this beautiful day because this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Well, thank you everyone for joining me on this beautiful Monday morn. I hope you have a great couple of days. God bless you. And until Wednesday, bye for now.